The pan-Yoruba social political organization Afenifere has expressed serious worries about worsening insecurity in Nigeria. In a statement by its national publicity secretary Jari Ajayi on Monday, the group wondered if the president, General Muhammad Buhari, retired, was aware of the situation. The group said the level of insecurity was unprecedented while calling on Buhari to demonstrate what he has or was serious about or that he was serious about ending the spate of killings and abductions across the country. Now, also, no fewer than seven hostages abducted from the Kaduna Abuja train um, incident was uh, were released, and they have uh, these hostages were released by the terrorists, including um, a family of six and a woman. A 60-year-old woman, Hajia Aisha Hassan, uh, was said to have been released due to life-threatening health challenges that deteriorated recently. Well, joining us to discuss this is Andy Akpotive, a political analyst and a social reformer. Always a pleasure to have you join us, Andy. Great to be here, Miriam. Great to be here. Good evening. Thank you. Now, um, according to uh, an index, a global uh, safety perception index, um, Nigeria is being ranked at 75th as insecurity is worsening in the country. Now, we all obviously know that... Um, um, these indexes are put out every year or every two years to um, look at the state of, and, 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 and some of the, the parameters used in measuring this is, of course, the number of people that have been killed, the amount of guns that come into a country, border controls, etc., etc. And Nigeria seems to fall short in all of these areas. But you, uh, you also are aware of how bad the security situation is. Before now, it just used to be in the north, and it would be a bit far-fetched, but now it's hitting close to home. And Afeni Ferrer is saying that it seems that Mr. President is not necessarily aware of what is happening in the country. Do you share uh, in that particular narrative? And if you do, why do you think the president of the country as huge as Nigeria, uh, that has as many A's as he does, would not be aware of what's going on? So it's really very laughable um, that uh, we're trying to excuse the president by saying that he's not aware. Other than the fact that the president has got a large routine of staff, and so you are talking about every kind of staff right now, those who are ministers, those who are special advisors, senior special advisors, the president has also got family members. He has got children. He has got cousins that consistently and constantly, they have direct access to him. So if I the first the president is being shielded, is not aware of what is going on, it, it beats me hollow. Because it would mean that indeed, the president is not only staying away from listening to his ministers and his aides, is also not speaking to his children, is also not speaking to his wife, is also not speaking to his cousins, is also not speaking to his in-laws. He's been completely insulated from everybody that he had relationship with at the initial before he became a president. Let us put culpability or domicile culpability where culpability should be domiciled. It is not a fact that the president is uh, not aware. He's aware, but he stands, and the executive insists that it appears as if the president does not have the solution to fixing our insecurity problem. You will recall that by the time good luck Jonathan was there and this president was, they said they all sorts about Chibok. And the press and Nigerians seem to have forgotten that there are still some girls called Chibok girls. There is still Dapchi. As a matter of fact, there is a particular girl with that Dapchi incident. And there are, there are several others. As much as you have the proliferation of insecurity across the length and breadth of this country, we had the people who were kidnapped that this president campaigned with to say that I am going to call, I'm going to address it, I'm going to get all these people returned, years are passed. If indeed uh, they have insulated him, they have kept him away from the others, the one that he knew, the one that he campaigned with, the cheapest girls, what has happened now, the one that he knew, the one that he campaigned with, 
How has he solved it now? The truth of the matter is that we have seen that incompetencies have been dancing on the streets regarding how this administration has been handling security matters. And we've seen, we've heard the president speak on these issues. He's talked tough. He's given, he's assured and reassured Nigerians that, you know, this will become a thing of the past. And, but then it seems like you have said that, that there are so many incompetences. There was a time that there was an outcry for service chiefs to be changed. There was a bit, bit of dilly darling, but then, of course, the service chiefs were changed. Did, that did not solve anything. As we speak today, there have been red alerts in the southwest. They have been, I mean, people have been, we've seen people coming into the, 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 the South in trailers. Absolutely. Uh, so again. 120 people or it, 150 people. Yes, but. Again, under cows and under motorcycles. Yeah, but, but, yeah, but again, from, Mr. President is one person and not in any way holding brief for the president. We have service chiefs. We have the chief of defense staff who at some point asked us to not be cowardly and, you know, you know, defend ourselves. And we've seen governors also, uh, out of frustration, ask for us to take up weapons. But let's look at solutions here. We have the Mary army. Marianne, can I just quickly jump in on that question? Please. The commander-in-chief of the armed forces is one person. If you thought that your security teams were not performing, sack them! We cannot be here making excuses for, for, for what should not be excused. The president is the only one, as far as I'm concerned, that has seen the terms of the employment and said to himself that he was going to be able to perform. Do not forget that I have continued to insist that the president wrote his exams or set his exams for us. He said it for himself, rather. He said, I will go and answer security issues, economy, and corruption. That exam, he set it for himself. Nigerians did not set it for him. Years have passed. This is almost less than one year before he leaves office. That exam that he set for himself, even him, if he was to mark himself, he would not give himself anything more than 10. It speaks to the fact that there is some level of, um, um, of unaware. I, I, I can say the president is not even was not aware of the of the nature of the challenge. I've been so before he began making those promises. So, Miriam, we cannot sit down and say the president is just one person. The constitution says the primary purpose of government shall be the security and the welfare of the people. You. You applied for this job. As a matter of fact, three times before you won. Three times you said to us that you understood how to fight insecurity. Today, as we speak, a lot of people are excusing it that, oh, it's not about the president. It's about the chiefs. It's about this. It's about this. If you knew the kitchen was going to be too hot for you because of your health condition, then do not apply to be a chef. Let's talk about solutions here because I really, uh, um, I'm here because we want to talk about how we can get ourselves or wiggle ourselves out of this. Because again, I, I have always wondered why anybody would want to be the president of any country knowing that there are lots of issues, especially a country like Nigeria. But the president did angle for that, so he is president. But then he has a few more months to go. He has even said that he can't wait to go and rest. He also has said that he's done his best. But how do we get ourselves out of this? And for every, anyone who, who becomes the president of this country, what should they be tackling? As we speak That's right all. now, as we speak now, the National Assembly, even though it be the opposition parties, are, 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 they're angling for an impeachment of sorts that many have also said might never really happen. What do we do in the interim? Elections are around the corner. How do we have free, fair, and credible elections and violence-free elections if we're unsafe? And how safe should people be feeling enough uh, I mean, I'm, so, I'm sorry, people should be feeling safe enough to want to go out and vote, but if that is nowhere to be found, how are we certain that we can have an election in the first instance? Marianne, so there are examinations that people have in life, and you don't get to write one exam, particularly in medical school, you don't get to write one exam more than twice. So if you wrote it and failed it, you had to receive it again. If you failed it again, you were warped. You were warped and sent to maybe the main school. Yeah, 
and you were thrown out of the medical school. And this is exactly how life is. Life essentially will give you opportunities to rework your mistakes. My father used to say that it's only a fool, it's only a fool that we fail exams that he had failed before. Again, a second time, a third time, and a fourth time. I'm not saying anything about this administration, but my, my solution is simple. We have seen that perpetually, consistently, this government has failed the Nigerian people when it comes to fighting insecurity. Miriam, let me tell you something that just happened less than 24 hours. They had told us that a certain name was arrested regarding the attack in Ondo State. But they forgot that they told us that that name, that person escaped, was one of the people who escaped from Kujé prison. How was he in Kujé prison and was also able to go and carry out attack in Ondo State? Are you are you seeing the are you seeing the that these narratives are not jiving? There, there is something fundamentally wrong that Nigerians are too naive about. And I'm saying that and how do we the fix solution it? is simple. Mm -hmm. Is that the President Muhammad Buhari's administration and the APC administration, they obviously do not have the solution to addressing this insecurity problem. And so where does, where, them where does, out of where, office. Where does get that... them out of office as quickly as yesterday. Well, well, get them well, out of Do not even start to consider or listen to this new rhetoric that they are going to bring. But Andy, fully, but Andy, that has to be, Andy, to Andy, us. that has to be done by the books. You need absolutely, a certain, absolutely, you need a certain majority. Absolutely. Yeah, hold on. You need a certain majority on the floor of the National Assembly, on both floors, by the way, to be able to get this to pass. But then we also know that the president's party is the majority in the National Assembly. That's on the one hand. Uh, many would say, you, many would Miriam, also I say, just hold on. Many would <laughs> also say that we wait till, you know, February uh, and March when the elections will hold proper for that to happen. But my question again, in case you didn't get me, what happens in the interim? More lives are being lost every other day. Nigerians don't sleep with both eyes closed anymore. Um, there seems to be a lot that's going wrong. So what do we do in the interim, in closing quickly, because we have to go? My solution is simple. Pressure the National Assembly to begin the process of the impeachment of the president. That's what we must do on the interim. I don't know how to mince words. I employed you to come and fix my company. You got into my company, and I am the shareholder, I'm one of the shareholders. We, they are share board of directors. And you were there. You sat there. You were unable to fix the thing. And you want me to wait for you to run out your term so that the company would run down the ditch. I will get the board. We will sit down. And we are going to get you out of there as the MD. Okay. The Senate, I wanted to say to you that do you know that one of the members on the floor of the Senate that was a part of this one who wants to impeach the president and gave the president this, this ultimatum? Is from is from Katsina State, the president state. Okay. Press, they have not even they have, they have not focused on him. From okay. Katsina State, APC man. Okay. And he's saying enough is enough. So who says that the people who are in APC are they not Nigeria? We got to enjoy quote unquote this insecurity. We have we to. must pressure them. And it's not about this ultimatum. We must because it's it is obvious that this president and the APC do not have the solution. For okay. this insecurity problem, All right. we must pressure them to quickly we have to use go. legal means. Mark my word, legal means. All right, Andy, we have to go. Andy Akwasive is a social reformer. He's also a political analyst. Thank you so much for speaking with us, Andy. We can see the passion in your conversation tonight. Thank you so tonight. much for having me. Thank, Thank you. you so and that's the show tonight on Plus Politics. Don't forget, if you missed a, a bit of this program, you can go on our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa or Plus TV Africa Lifestyle and click on Plus Politics to watch a, a replay of the show. Don't forget to subscribe and like our page. I am Mary Anna Cohen. Have a good night. See you tomorrow when we talk for development.